Hello everyone. Welcome to this presentation on faster computation of isogenies of large prime degree. I am Antonin Leroux, and this is joint work with Daniel Bernstein, Luca Defeo, and Benjamin Smith. So the first question is, of course, why bother with faster isogenies? Well, isogenies are uh, one of the six families that are still uh, in the NIST post-quantum competition. And as you can see here, uh, it is represented by one candidate, uh, an encryption scheme. And while isogenies are not as popular as other solutions, such as lattices, they offer some nice features. And the most important one of them is that the keys are very compact. Of course, this comes with the downside that the encryption is rather slow compared to, compared to other solutions. Since then, uh, many more uh, protocols have been introduced, and most of them share this kind of trade-off between the compact keys and uh, quite poor efficiency. And so that is why we want to speed up the computation in is isogeny-based crypto. And uh, a small disclaimer, what I'm going to uh, explain today uh, will not impact the NIST competition. But as we are going to see, uh, there are some protocols that will be improved by uh, our paper. So first, let's start with a few definitions. An isogeny is a non-trivial morphism between elliptic curves. And more concretely, if we take a point P defined uh, for some curve E over some field uh, K, uh, a point P who has prime order N, then we can define the isogeny whose kernel is generated by P, and in this case the degree will be N, and we can express it as an algebraic map going from the curve E to another curve, the codomain that we write E caution G, and uh, the, this algebraic map is defined uh, with this formula here, and using some polynomials, here G and H, which can be computed from uh, the knowledge of P and the curve E, and whose degrees is approximately N. And in fact, this covers the case of separable cyclic isogenies, and if you don't know what these words mean, it's not really important. Uh, but in fact, this is exactly uh, what we need uh, for cryptography. So this is the interesting case for us. So now that we have our definitions, what kind of problem can we tackle? Uh, well, the first one, maybe the most basic one, in the, is the isogeny computation problem. So given a point uh, P, which is a generator of a group of uh, size N, then we want to compute the uh, rational fractions defining the uh, related uh, isogeny. But in fact, we are not very interested in this problem. We'd rather solve the uh, isogeny evaluation problem, which is given a generator P and, and some other point Q. The goal is to find the codomain uh, E caution G and the image point phi of Q. And this is quite fortunate because this uh, problem allows more uh, room for improvement. So uh, maybe a concrete example with uh, Montgomery elliptic curves, which is a uh, a model of curve that is uh, often used in cryptography. So Montgomery curve is defined by this equation here, uh, who depend uh, on uh, some coefficient a, and then we can uh, compute the cyclic isogeny of prime de degree uh, of sorry odd prime degree n uh, with kernel generated by some point p uh, using this rational fraction here, uh, and we see that it e that it involves the uh, x coordinates of the scalar multiple of our uh, generator P. So uh, then we can compute the coefficient of the uh, codomain E cushion G uh, from uh, the knowledge of the coefficient A and the uh, x coordinate of the scalar multiple of P. And uh, I think this formula already gives the, the intuition of this. Uh, but in fact, all the computations can basically be reduced to uh, evaluations on several values of uh, these kernel polynomials, here h, whose roots are the uh, x-coordinates of the scalar multiple of the generator p. 
And yeah, so evaluation of these polynomials and also some related polynomials, such as its derivative or, uh, or such. And so, uh, well, this first uh, remark gives uh, quite uh, a quite naive algorithm to solve our isogeny evaluation problem, which is by computing uh, naively the different evaluations of our polynomial. And uh, so this gives a linear complexity in N. Uh, and I just want to say that um, all the complexities in this talk are expressed in terms of uh, arithmetic operations over the field K. And uh, as such, uh, what I'm going to say is true for any field. Uh, but of course, in practice, we are going to use it for finite fields. And so, uh, is it fast? Well, uh, as you can see, it's linear basically in the size of the problem. So, uh, we can answer that it's quite fast already. And of course, this has uh, allowed to produce some quite efficient schemes based on isogenies. But to the question, is it optimal? Well, of course, the answer is no. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here today. And so, in fact, this method uh, to compute isogenies dates back to uh, Jacques Vellu and his seminal paper of 1971, where he uh, first gave this uh, expression using polynomials. And basically, the, uh, the approach for solving these uh, evaluations and computations problem has mostly remained uh, the same uh, for the last uh, 50 years. And of course, this is until today. So let's take a closer look at the problem at hand, which is this problem of evaluating the kernel polynomial here. And the question is, well, what kind of uh, complexity can we get to solve this problem? And I think a good way of getting the intuition of this is to look at uh, examples, a couple of examples that we have from the literature. And the first one is the factorial example, where we take the polynomial whose roots are the n first integers. And in fact, this uh, problem has been studied by Strassen in 76. And uh, he built from uh, the work of Pollard to uh, make um, the de deterministic integer factorization algorithm. And for that, uh, he gave a way to compute this uh, more, efficiency, uh, more efficiently than the naive method. And the idea is to use this kind of decomposition of our polynomial H into this uh, baby step, giant step fashion. And so for this example, I'm assuming that uh, n is equal to s squared, which is of course in contradiction with, with what I said earlier, that I want to look at prime n, but this is just for the sake of simplicity. And this method can be uh, adapted easily to any kind of n without changing the asymptotic complexity. And so the idea is to look at the, this baby step, giant step decomposition with these indices i and uh, j, and then we'll be able to uh, compute the value h of alpha using resultants. So, uh, okay, so our idea is to use this, uh, these two uh, baby step and giant step polynomials here, whose degree is s. And then uh, the nice properties. Uh, sorry, but uh, how uh, the use of resultant makes it uh, faster? It's a bit unclear to me. Uh, it's not that easy to. So, uh, is it really faster than, why is it faster than the naive method? Uh, well, I'm going to explain the complexity just now. So, uh, yeah, and then the nice properties of resultant is that the result is correct. If you, if you compute the resultant of B and, uh, and J, it gives uh, F H of alpha. And so this gives uh, O tilde of square root of N complexity. And by uh, O tilde, I mean that I'm forgetting all the logarithmic factors. And to understand this complexity, uh, the idea is that we have these two polynomials, b and j, whose degree is uh, s, which is the square root of n. And then the uh, computation of, uh, of the resultant is, uh, at least for generic polynomials, is in O tilde of uh, degree of b plus degree of g. So here it gives a uh, square root of n. Then we can look at another example with uh, multiplicative groups. So here, the roots of our polynomials are the integral powers of some field element zeta. And in fact, this was the problem o originally studied by Pollard. And then Strassen took his idea and adapted it to his setting. And uh, it was also uh, studied by the Chudnovsky brothers. 
and more recently by Alan Boston to compute terms of holonomic sequences. And uh, in fact, the idea works uh, almost the sa same way with a few adaptations to the polynomials. But once again, the resultant ensures the correctness of the result, and uh, the complexity remains the same. So now that we have seen that, the question is, can we do the same to our setting? Uh, after all, we have, we have this kind of group, which is the, the, the group generated by P and uh, the scalar multiples. Uh, so this seems to be quite close. And, but in fact, uh, this will just not work the same way. Indeed, uh, in the, our two examples, we use this kind of progressions uh, to transform the baby step and uh, giant step into these, uh, these progressions of uh, the integer be between 0 uh, and, uh, and minus 1. And these progressions are uh, based on uh, simple operations that are the addition and multiplication. But unfortunately, we don't have such simple formula uh, when it comes to x coordinates. And uh, this obstacle uh, explains why uh, this uh, uh, this the, the, the algorithm uh, to compute uh, and evaluate isogenies remained the same for so long. And uh, the main contribution of our paper is to overcome this uh, obstacle. And the idea is to use the next best thing that uh, we have from our algebraic group law on our elliptic curve. And in fact, we have these uh, interesting bicrodotic expressions that allow us to compute the symmetric functions in the x coordinates of i plus sj and i minus sj times p. And uh, this will actually do the trick for us, as we can uh, pair the, the factors in our polynomials 2 by 2 to use these, uh, these formulas. And with that, and the correct indices uh, i and j here, we can actually uh, compute uh, compute our um, our evaluations using the same uh, baby step giant step with resultants uh, idea. And so this gives this O tilde of square root of n complexity once again. So now that I have my algorithm to uh, evaluate efficiently my kernel polynomial, as I said earlier, this means that I can solve my um, ev uh, isogeny evaluation problem with the same complexity. And uh, so this is uh, a nice improvement compared to the uh, linear complexity that we had uh, earlier. Uh, I'd like to conclude this part with a few remarks. So uh, first, this improvement can actually be seen as some kind of time memory trade-off. It may not be clear uh, right now, but in fact, the uh, r efficient resultant algorithm that we use uh, or relying on some kind of remainder tree structure that needs, uh, requires some memory to be computed. And uh, I've only been talking about uh, Montgomery curves, but in fact our result stands for any model of curves. The formula might be a bit different, but uh, in a sense it works in the same way. Also, our technique can be adapt adapted to the case where the uh, kernel generator uh, is not uh, is defined on an uh, algebraic extension of the field. It also can be adapted. The complexity might be a bit worse, but it can be made to work. And finally, I conclude this uh, theoretical part with uh, s uh, an open question, which is, can we extend this, uh, this idea to a more general setting to use on different kind of, uh, of groups uh, different kind of functions. And I think the first example that comes to mind is uh, the case of is isogenies between uh, Abelian varieties of higher dimension. But uh, of course, this is a case that is more complicated and it involves some theta functions. And that is why we did not uh, pursue this uh, in our paper. And then uh, I'd like to talk a bit about some performance con consideration. Because all that I said is very uh, sound, but theoretical. And we want to assess what kind of improvement we have in practice. So we've made some several implementations to assess uh, the improvement. Uh, here you see some uh, experiments about uh, small degrees. 
And what you can remember from this slide is that at some point the red dots goes below, go below the blue ones. And this means that our new method is already uh, more efficient for a small degree. I don't know if you can read it, but uh, the cross point is around uh, degrees uh, equal to 100, something like that. Then we also push the computations for large degrees. And uh, we see that already for uh, degrees up to a uh, few thousands, the new method becomes really more efficient, uh, maybe something like 100, one uh, order of magnitude faster than uh, the old one. But of course this is uh, fine, but uh, we want to see what is the real impact on uh, isogenous cryptography. So as I said, we have this cross point of uh, 100, and in fact this uh, already means some improvement for uh, several protocols. The most important of them is probably uh, the Seaside protocol, which requires some computations of isogenies of degree going up to 587. And with this, we've made an implementation uh, on which we witnessed a 1% improvement for the first level of security, which is Seaside uh, 512. So this is not uh, too uh, impressive, but for the next level of security, uh, which is Seaside 1024, we uh, reached a 10% improvement, which is already much more significant. A uh, more impressive example is definitely the protocol B-side uh, of Craig Costello, which can be seen as an adaptation of the SIDH protocol. Uh, and uh, for this protocol, we need a computation of n going up in the millions. And for this, we actually proposed the first secure implementation of this protocol. And the new method allowed to go from minutes to seconds for uh, key exchange. So here, uh, the improvement is quite nice. Uh, missed one, and so there are actually some uh, some other schemes that could benefit from our new method. Um, unfortunately, we are not able to provide an implementation for them, and uh, so the gain still needs to be assessed. But uh, keep in mind that uh, there are, there is still room for improvement, and in the paper we uh, we mentioned several uh, direction of improvement that could be explored in order to uh, lower this uh, cross point and uh, gain more efficiency in practice. And on these words, I'll thank you for watching. And you can go to the website if you want more details on the implementations or uh, to check the paper. Thank you very much.